Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on Farmer Leaf. Today we're in the middle of the spring 2019 season and today I just got my first batch of single trees. You can see that the, the leaves look very beautiful, very very nice <coughs> green leaves from a tea garden called Aiban in Dapingzhang on the main plateau of Jingmai Mountain and I wanted to film this this uh, shaqing session and share it with you. So um, I'm gonna start now. Uh, we got only 15 kilo of, um, of this single tree production so that's maybe about uh, 20 different trees, 20 big trees from Jingmai that have been harvested together and uh, so let's start now. So first <coughs> I've weighted the tea. We got 15, kilogra 15 kilograms originally. After withering, now we got about uh, 12 kilograms. So we've got quite a lot of evaporation that's gone on during the withering. But um, I had to delay a bit the, um, the shatching session because I thought the leaves were a bit hard, uh, not soft enough. So that's why I waited a bit. So now it's like 10.30 in the evening. But now we're ready to go. Uh, so I've waited half of my batch. I'm going to do that in two batches. So this is a six kilo batch. Uh, I've put my fire on. So this is, um, let's say, a medium high fire that I put here. Not the highest fire because I don't have a big batch. And I can check my wok temperature. So I can see it's about 300 degrees. Uh, yeah, 320 at the highest point. So. Uh, it's gonna be a fairly hot start, but uh, let's do it. Oh, and before I start, I just check the time on my phone. It's 10.39. So, at the start, you have to move fairly quickly. So that the leaves won't burn. Oh, there was a stone in there. So at this point, you can hear the crackling of the leaves, and I have to move them at a, at a high rate so that they don't burn. Because at the beginning, Despite the extended weathering, they still don't have uh, that much water on their surface. So the first step of the wave of the the shaqing is to let the let the water come out of the cells and let the leaves shrink. You can see that now the leaves are shrinking slowly. So I will keep moving them. At a, high, at a fast pace until, uh, until enough water is out so that they won't be at risk of burning. I don't like to do that kind of small batches. I prefer to, uh, when I have the choice, I prefer to do like 8 kilo per batch. We're at 6 kilo now. Uh, a small batch is, makes it harder to control the, the steam. Okay, you have less water to play with in your in your batch, so that means you you have to be much more conservative. You you can't open the batch too much, so that's why I cannot make a ball and try not to open it too much because I need to concentrate more steam. And I remind you that now I'm using six, six kilo per batch, six kilo instead of eight, because I only have a 12 kilo batch now after weaving. So that's why I can only uh, I can only fry six kilo at a time. 12 kilo batch would be also possible, but it's very tiring and you'll you'll probably have a more yellowish tea and more steam, you'd, you'd have much more steam. Typically uh, I try to keep my limits from 6 kilo to 10 kilo per batch. Okay, and depending on the size of the batch, 
you have to adapt a bit your moves and the fire intensity so that's why I chose not to put a very high fire at this time so far so good since we, we haven't burned the leaves yet and now it's less likely to happen because you can see that they have shrunk a bit Yeah, so during this uh, chatting session, I'd just like to summarize a bit what happened during the, this early spring season. So, um, well, the 2019 early spring uh, has been very dry so far. We haven't had any major rain, just maybe two or three light rains at the end of February and the beginning of March but usually we have a bit more than this in March so um, I can feel that uh, well the tea trees lack of water and the harvest is quite delayed it's maybe well uh, like the, the it seems like the bulk of the tea the ancient tea gardens the the older trees haven't haven't sprouted that much so far like I said, this is our first batch of single trees, of big tree tea of the season. But it's not a problem. The, you know, the, the season variation is normal and it can be as wide as like two weeks, two or three weeks between an early season and a late season, depending on the year. It depends mainly of ra on rain, I would say, and also on temperature, but usually if you have rain, it's also associated with low temperature. What makes tea so good in early spring is mainly that the, teas, the, the tea trees lack of water, they are under stress, and well, my hypothesis is that to adapt to that stress, the leaves will, um, the tea trees will put more secondary compounds in, the, in their leaves so that they get better protection against insects. Because they can't afford to, to lose many, many leaves, so they build up those chemicals to, well, to prevent the leaves from being eaten by all the herbivores. Okay, so I started with 300 degree temperature, so that means we had quite a lot of heat embodied in the wok. And now I can feel that that heat that was in the wok has, uh, well, has dissipated, has been conducted into the leaves and into the air. Let me just check the fire. gonna push it a little bit more inside so we have a side fire here which is quite convenient because it, then it's possible to make the tea uh, alone Buyong Buyong Kuepo although you can see my brother-in-law has joined me to help me control the fire yeah, just ask him to just move the, the wood a little bit so that I can get a bit more flames. But it, it's better to use a, a low fire when you have a small batch like this because things can easily go out of hands. Either because you, if your wok is too hot, well, either you, you have to flip the tea very quickly and you will lose a lot of water either you'll have the tea burning on the wok and in both cases it's pretty bad i remind you if you if you don't have if you don't manage to keep enough water in the leaves uh well you'll run out your your leaves will dry uh, early in the, in the session and it might not be enough steam and enough cooking time to properly cook the stems and then the, the enzymes in the stems won't be destroyed and you'll have red stems. So that's why you want to... Actually, this shatching is really 
a mix of uh, steaming and you could say frying on the pan. But here at all point in the session, well I, I don't want to open those leaves too much because I don't want to lose that steam, that precious steam that we have in a small batch. And now you can see that the beauty of the leaf you know, that's revealed as the leaf shrinks, it takes uh, the darker green notes, darker green color, and then as time goes, as the cooking goes, the chlorophyll is uh, slowly destroyed by the heat and that will give me uh, more yellow leaves. But yeah, so I wanted to talk a bit about this season. So we, we haven't much, made much tea so far and I think uh, that season we, we won't make, make as much tea as in the past years for the simple reason that uh, tea is quite expensive these years and um, well it, it seems that sometimes the, the price of the leaves gets gets out of control well you should understand that, that here the, um, the land owners like the, the farmers, the tea farmers have a, quite a lot of bargaining power at least in the short term because uh, well what happens usually is that uh, well there, there's a lot of tea factories in Jing Mai and you can buy leaves from any farmer. You can go directly in the garden and buy the leaves from the farmer. And by word of mouth, uh, a price will be fixed every day in the village. Well, it's supposed to be fixed, but actually it really depends on how badly the, the factories want the leaves. And there's a, there's a tendency to overbid each other and um, well, that's kind of what drives the price increase every day. So, every year we, have, we can notice the same dynamics. You have uh, cheap tea at the beginning of the season, and the price increases as more gushu comes out. The price of gushu increases. Uh, the factories start getting orders, so they are in need of more, more tea leaves. And, um, well, that drives the price higher. Now, um, here we have one big factory, which is called La Lansan Uh They really make a lot of tea. Uh, I've heard, like, uh, in 2017, they bought, like, 300 tons of tea from Jingmai Mountain, which is 30% of the total production. And, um, well, wh when this tea factory starts buying tea and the price increases a lot and when it stops buying it decreases a lot too so if you have tea gardens here you probably also have a small tea factory at your home but you don't always make tea it depends most of the farmers they um, they make tea in an opportunistic manner they don't systematically make tea. Either they make tea when they have a specific order, either they make tea when they, when they don't have any place to, to sell their leaves to. So it means that a lot of those small factories, they will operate in early spring when they have orders from customers, or when they think the price mm, given by the factories is not high enough, or they will process tea uh, during the summer, during the rainy season, when the demand for the leaves is low and uh, the price is cheap. And actually that possibility they have of making tea at home, uh, that's also what, what keeps the price high because if you don't give them the, the price they want, well, they will just process the tea and keep it at home, even if um, even if they don't have any customer. And in the last years, well, so far, before maybe before 2017, it was a good strategy because you'd always have uh, random buyers coming through the village 
when buying tea. But the problem is, uh, as the price of tea kept increasing every year, uh, now I would say that the, the demand for tea by like private private customers has decreased quite a lot. So um, since 2018, it's been a bit harder for those small farmers to, to sell the tea that they produced in an opportunistic way. So actually a lot of people still have 2018 tea at home. So now you can understand that, um, that the market is a bit uncertain for, uh, for poor tea. Well, it's kind of like everybody but the tea farmers would like the, the price to decrease. But actually, well, in some way, people would like the price to decrease, but on the other hand, uh, like the government and many investors, they don't want the price to decrease because they want to keep it as a worthy uh, kind of stock-like investment for the long term. So it's quite complicated because we're at a point where, um, where everybody feels like if tea was cheaper, we'd have much more sales but on the other hand we don't really want to decrease the price of tea and then when you're when you're the middleman like the, the tea factory who's processing the leaves well you don't have that much bargaining power either you buy tea you buy the fresh leaves at the full price ask either you don't make tea and so this year well we can observe the, the two strategies some some people make tea despite the high price and some people um, just don't don't make tea, or only make tea on orders. So I think it's time to take out the fire. So you see, I'm not opening the leaves at all because I want to keep the steam in. So this is leaves from uh, a tea garden called Aipan. It's well in the southern part of Tapinjang. And it, uh, it's a very nice location. They have quite a lot of big trees there on a relatively flat area, very forested. It's a very beautiful garden that's uh, owned by one of our own uncle called Nadan. So I like to get tea from there. Uh, I think it's the first year that I take his single tree production, so we'll see how it turns out. But typically this, this garden makes good tea with good mouthfeel and fragrance. So yeah, that's how it is so far. We decided not to, not to spend uh, too much money on the, on the fresh leaves so far. Now in the last couple of days the, the price has stabilized, so let's see if it, if it decreases a little bit, maybe we might do some extra production. Otherwise we just will just not buy leaves and make the, just process the, the tea from our own gardens. Yeah, so now we're totally out of flames. I think it's just time to compress the tea a little bit in that bowl and try not to heat it up too much because I can feel it's drying. So every time you, you turn it you can see it's a bit more silvery. The leaves get darker as they dry but we don't want to get them too dry because if you make them too dry, that's how you make green tea. You can raise the fragrance, but you will lose, you, you will destroy all of the enzymes in the tea and it will lose its ability to age. Typically, you'll have a, a tea that's very fragrant and pleasant when it's young, but which um, will turn quite bitter and with a light mouthfeel as it ages. 
so we want to avoid that and plant this tea for more long-term aging. Even though I know that most people drink it when it's young because it's still pretty good, but we try to keep a little bit on the side for aging too. So let me check the time now. It's 57, so it's been 18 minutes. And I think that should be about it because we have a small batch. So you, you have to adapt a little bit the time depending on the size of your batch. Typically with, uh, with an 8 kilo batch, I will, I will cook it for 20 minutes. But of course these are only guidelines. What really matters is to look at the tea, see if it's dry or not, smell it, see how it looks, what color it is. That's really how you make the tea. These kind of control parameters are a bit for fun or control, extra control, I would say. And now I'm just separating the leaves. So if I do that move slowly, I do like this so that the, the, the leaves can only fall vertically and that helps separate them. I do that to try to untie the knots that are made by the leaves. And that, that will help some of the leaves that were tied together to, to cook properly. Okay, and now I think it's enough, so it's time to take it out. And when you take it out, because we used a fairly short time, um, I want to maybe keep it a little bit in the... Um, in the basket so that uh, it will it will keep being cooked a little bit by the steam that's inside so that we make sure that the the stems don't turn red but you don't want to do this for too long otherwise you'll have cell degradation and it will make um, a kind of jelly that that will make the the tea the tea soup a bit muddy now usually this muddiness if it's not very strong it will disappear after pressing, but uh, it's a balance to find. If you have too much steaming, you will have a muddy soup. That's why I like Japanese green tea is muddy. It's because of the steam that kind of degrades the cells. Okay, so that will be about it. I'm gonna fry the next wok now, and uh, that's it for today. So if you like this video and would like to see more content like this, well, please subscribe to our channel, uh, like our video, and visit our website for some nice teas from Jingmai. This tea will probably be available by May or June of this year, but meanwhile we have a lot of tea on the website, so definitely go have a look. The link, the link is in the video description. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.